On the 23rd of June 2016, the people of Britain voted to leave the European Union, a decision that caught almost everyone by surprise, including politicians, financial markets, big business, pollsters, bookmakers and even prominent Leave campaigners such as Nigel Farage, who conceded defeat shortly after the polls closed at 10pm, only to start backtracking a couple of hours later as the actual results started to come in, resulting in an immediate panic as market participants reversed their positions. So whilst the Bank of England was able to contain the immediate market panic, nevertheless, economic uncertainty remains extremely high with the potential for many years of confidence draining paralysis as businesses and investors put off making major decisions until they can see the light at the end of the Brexit tunnel. This video, as part of a series based on my in-depth analysis posted at marketoracle.co.uk, looks at 10 major drivers of the UK economy and markets and of what to expect to happen next. But firstly, for a quick recap of what actually happened on Brexit night that caught virtually all by surprise, then do watch my selection of the highlights from 8 hours of BBC coverage of the EU referendum result. And also see the second video on trading markets during Brexit night that illustrates how all hell broke loose once the polls closed Thursday 23rd of June, triggering a sharp rally in sterling and FTSE futures that was sustained until the actual results started to be announced shortly after midnight, triggering a five hour market panic. In the run up to the EU referendum, the establishment remain camp had peddled a perpetual year long story that UK house prices would collapse or crash if Brexit happened. As Operation Fear each month ramped up the threats of that which awaited a post-Brexit Britain. For instance, George Osborne repeatedly issued doom warnings that likely contributed to his swift sacking by Theresa May. And apparently, in a world where zero interest rates are moving to negative rates, then the UK was said would be the odd one out to actually see an increase in interest rates. David Cameron and George Osborne then continued with their contradictory statements, one of plunging sterling and rising inflation but falling house price inflation. Firstly, as I've repeatedly pointed out that a fall in the exchange rate is what virtually every central bank is trying to engineer by means of zero and negative interest rate. It's called the currency wars. Central banks trying to import inflation and export deflation as I covered in this video in response to earlier government propaganda. In a world starved of yield with many bondholders in Japan and Germany actually paying interest to lend money to the government, rising UK interest rates would have acted as a huge financial hoover sucking in foreign investment into UK bonds which ironically would result in a fall in UK interest rate, i.e. demand exceeding supply. But of course, now post-Brexit, market interests have done the opposite to all of the fear-mongering, with even the likelihood of an August cut in interest rate, as the government and the Bank of England desperately scrambled to offset any Brexit weakness through money-printing stimulus. So whilst housing market data tends to be released on a monthly basis, therefore the first full month of post-Brexit data is yet to be released. Nevertheless, London is clearly suffering the downdraft as several London property funds collectively to a value of over £25 billion have been frozen, locking their customers in. However, I've repeatedly warned for a good eight years now to stay clear of property funds for the fundamental fact that by their very nature tend to be illiquid because they are invested in properties so cannot be easily converted into cash, especially during a period of market uncertainty when demand may temporarily evaporate. For instance, my UK House Prices Forecast ebook of mid-2014 iterated this. 
Whilst post-Brexit, nothing much has really changed in terms of the perma-doom commentary, as the mainstream press remains focused on stories for imminent shortfalls in UK house prices, as apparently the construction industry and the UK economy has fallen off the edge of a cliff. Instead, one should take all the prevailing doom and gloom as a cue for house prices to likely rise after the initial dip rather than crashing by 20% for the fundamental fact that UK house prices in dollars are still about 12% cheaper now. A Brexit discount for potential foreign buyers who primarily will be wondering whether UK house prices will get cheaper in currency terms or should they act to seize the moment and pick up a bargain now. So in my opinion, foreign demand will be stronger for UK property going forward and the only delay is in investors waiting and watching for sterling to stabilise, which it seems to be doing so, and the longer sterling holds its current range or trends higher, then the greater will be foreign interest in buying UK properties, especially if the do merchants' headlines for house prices falls fail to materialise. What the academics and mainstream press commentators persistently fail to comprehend is trend, or more precisely the trend in affordability. The trend over the past 40 years has been for the proportion of household earnings spent on housing costs to rise from 20% 40 years ago to an average of 35% by December 2013 which is trending towards 50% by 2030. This is the big story that the academics have missed as over time, decades in fact, people are gradually becoming conditioned to spend more and more of their earnings on housing costs as being the norm which the government subsidises through benefits such as tax credits and housing benefit. The reason why I expected affordability to trend ever higher again has its roots in the exponential inflation megatrend as workers relentlessly face a loss of purchasing power of earnings and savings due to reasons such as the inflation of the size of the population that is mostly as a result of continuing out of control immigration as evidenced by the baby boom now underway mostly amongst migrant families of the past 15 years that acts to relentlessly put pressure on housing affordability and availability where annual construction new builds are not able to keep pace with even half of the new demand generated each year. Therefore, workers have no choice but to commit an ever larger proportion of their earnings towards housing costs. The effect of which is that housing bear market affordability troughs are being ratcheted ever higher, which has left many academics confused as they remain fixated on their theoretical models that imply house prices must fall so as to return to affordability levels of past troughs as the real world trend passes them by and their models. The updated affordability graph shows the underlying relentless trend of affordability being once more ratcheted higher that looks set to breach the 2007 bull market peak during 2016, i.e. house prices this year will be even more unaffordable than they were right at the very peak of the last housing bull market mania. More on of housing affordability in the following video. In terms of the prospect for UK house prices, it is now over two and a half years since exerted analysis and the concluding five year trend forecast from the then forthcoming UK housing market ebook was published. The latest release of UK average house prices data is showing just a 3.4% deviation against the forecast trend trajectory, which if it continued to persist, then in terms of the long-term trend forecast for a 55% rise in average UK house prices by the end of 2018, would then translate into a 7% reduction in the forecast outcome to approximately 48% by the rise of 2018. UK house prices momentum going into the EU referendum had significantly slowed from plus 11% for March 2016 to plus 6.3% for June. I expect momentum to continue to slow over the next few months, probably bottoming out at about 4% before rising again towards 10% by 
by the end of this year. Thus, UK house prices will continue to defy the highly vocal perma run crowd who have been proclaiming that a UK house prices crash is always imminent for the past four years, who I'm sure will jump on the momentum slowdown bandwagon as being anything other than just that, a slowdown in the rate of annual increase in house prices, which I still expect to remain strongly positive, i.e. above 5%, and end 2016 trending back towards plus 10% all in house prices with a more severe impact in overpriced locations and for flats as per my in-depth analysis of December 2015 that warned to expect London to take a hit but overall it would not affect UK average house prices that I expected to continue trending higher for 2016 a trend that should become apparent over the coming months as London weakness fails to impact on UK average house prices that I'm sure will confuse many so-called housing market experts. So again, don't be blinkered by London house price falls over the next few months as they will not impact on house prices across the rest of the UK. The bottom line is that UK house prices are going to continue to get ever more expensive where those who are waiting for a crash to more affordable levels will continue to regret not buying as the only way housing can ever start to become more affordable is if the UK literally triples the number of new bills each year from approximately 140,000 a year to 400,000 something that is just not going to happen as it would literally mean the government undertaking to build a new major city every year. Instead it has been over 40 years since the last new town let alone city was built. Therefore the UK housing crisis is not just one of inability of the housing market to cope with current demand but as the earlier housing affordability trend graphs illustrate that the crisis is going to get much worse with each passing year which ultimately means a social explosion of some kind, maybe not a revolution, but it's not going to look pretty where Brexit is just the first rebellion of the British people against the establishment that want to import cheap labour that the taxpayer picks up the bill for in terms of in-work benefits and the people of Britain pay the price for in terms of the slow motion collapse of society as literally service after service freezes hence why the housing crisis can only be addressed after Britain has left the European Union which still remains several years away thus to answer the question UK house prices are not going to crash or even fall on, on an annual basis anyway instead my long-standing five-year forecast continues to suggest several more years of rising UK house prices that I'm sure will continue to climb a wall of clueless mainstream press worry. And remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos in this 10 part series as well as new in-depth analysis and detailed trend forecasts.